Let me finish. This is the first time I committed a hate crime. Maybe they'll jerk my dick off <laughs> or you know, like something like that. Yeah, probably. We've discussed it. I'm a sociopath. <laughs> Put it in the trash can. Your worst friend. You want to know why you're all fucked up? Just look at the fucking bums you hang around with. You're listening to Your Worst Friend with Shane and Matt. I'm Matt. I'm joined today by my friend and co-host, a white man, Shane. Hello, folks. I'm Shane, and I'm the host that came to bring the pain. Wow. It's pretty sick. Today, we are presenting Rap. the fourth volume in the series, Black, White. It was an FX show from, I think, 2006, maybe, something like that, early 2000s. Uh, if you have not watched or listened to any of our other episodes, go back they are still on the RSS feed. Uh, They're really good. They are They're really, really good. funny. Um, you can find all of those things at yourworstfriend.com. Follow us everywhere at Worst Friend Cast. And if you want to listen to all of these shows entirely commercial free, everything ever recorded, and a bonus episode every week, you can go to patreon.com slash worst friend cast costs a dollar a month you get everything ever recorded entirely commercial free and you get a bonus episode every week it's a great deal you can just sign up for one month download everything and then cancel it that's fine do you shit do you think we should raise the price on the patreon because people hear that and they think fuck that's too good of a deal to be true there must be some fucking catch and they're gonna screw me over in the end because like i don't know how more (laughs) how genuine we can actually be like but we mean it, folks. It really is only a dollar, and you get like hundreds of fucking episodes, and you you really only have to pay the dollar once, you it, fucking animals. It's like 260 hours of content. Like, show me another it's a shitload. Yeah. If it was a movie that you only had to pay a dollar for, and it was 260 hours long, it would be a total piece of shit movie, most likely. Probably be a really bad movie. But you would still pay the dollar just to have the movie and put it on your little collection of Blu-rays, right? I, I did that with a really bad movie once. Which one? Uh, Pathfinder. It was Vikings versus Indians. The fuck Feather, does that not mean? Die. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it's a movie about these fucking Vikings that show up in North America and they fight a bunch of Indians and and then and then monsters. Also, I think it was a dollar. It doesn't sound like it was worth a dollar. It sounds sounds like a piece of shit, but you know what? It was only a dollar. Yeah, dude, and our shit's better than Pathfinder. Oh, so. so much better than fucking Pathfinder. Come on now. Um, Black White the TV show on FX in the early 2000s. It was produced by Ice Cube. Um, oh, yeah, dude. When, way before he was fucking producing mediocre mid-budget comedies are we there the whole yet? family yeah. yeah he was or what maybe that was out already i don't fucking remember his career path that well but um this i i did miss this when it was new i think i was either in the marines or getting ready to go into the marines when this came out so it like i was caught up in being a fucking hero you know basically so i couldn't watch this when it was new hmm yeah, I don't uh, I don't know that, if I, that I watched it on TV either necessarily, but maybe I did. I feel like I might have tried to watch it or something. Anyway, I feel like this came after he established his hate for Asians but before <laughs> his hate for the Jewish people and way right? before he was chastising Bill Maher for hating. Oh, people. yeah. 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 For yeah, using a word in a joke. Before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the premise of the show, if you've yet to listen to any of the previous episodes and you're somehow diving into episode four, which makes no fucking sense, though, I guess Star Wars did it. Yeah, dude, we're like Star Wars or you are for diving in right now. Yeah. Humble listener. Yeah. You're jumping into episode four. Um, anyway, it's a black family and a white family. And what they do is they wear makeup to change the color of each other's skin. Now, the black family dressing up as white people, not so controversial. I mean, it's not great either. It's less, 
Uh, did, did, I mean, it's controversial for a, a subgroup of people. Sure. Um, but it's not it's not as controversial as the white family putting on blackface and walking around Crenshaw, you know, yeah, I've... letting people know, like, hey, I understand the experience now. Not necessarily. I feel like even in 2006, this wouldn't happen unless this was Ice Cube's idea. Yeah, like I don't think Ron Howard could have gone to FX and been like, hey, I got an idea for a show. Let's, <laughs> yeah. let, let's throw some honkies in blackface. And you really know, get them Cube out there. Might have been the only person who could have pitched this show in Hollywood. Like, I want to put a bunch of white people in blackface. And everyone's like, oh, Cube, I don't think we should do that. He's like, did I fucking start a bitch? <laughs> you know, he's like slapping people and shit like all these executives. They had to make it. These fuckers got they didn't have a choice. They were you know? terrified of him. Um, uh, all right. Yeah. Makes a lot more sense now. We got, uh, sorry. I just sat on my balls. It happens. Don't worry about it. We got a lot of clips to get through. Uh, Let's so do it. we are going to be referring again. Go back and listen to the old episodes too, please. It just gives you better context and everything. We're going to refer to these people as they are in real life. So white <laughs> girl is the white girl her, wearing yeah. black face. Okay. Yeah. yeah we, we refer to everybody by their birth race yes they're pure skin if you will yeah and for both groups, whatever for mumbo both jumbo yeah. they they identify as like hey there's no data to establish how you identify like we know what you came out as when you were born that's what we use exactly so fucking idiots white girl uh is in a poetry group a slam poetry group all right and mm. the poetry group is going to comment here on what they want the white girl to get into while she's dressed as a black girl. I think they <laughs> just recently revealed or she just recently revealed yeah. to them, hey, by the way, I'm not actually black. I am a white person. And they were like, oh, shit, we knew that already because you corny. Um, we could tell by your uh, lack of dance skills and rhymes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and your ass that looks like you've been sitting on a bus all day is tiny. Um, and your white ass eyelids. <laughs> all right. I do not want to leave this experience without really learning all that I can about being black. I really want to get it. Now I want to get to some poetry and explore it. And I love my poetry class, and I want to get as much as I can with the time that I have with these people. But alas, I was so uncaptivated by that blue black strawberry they refer to as Latoya. Uh -huh. <laughs> Even though my poetry class knows that I'm Wait white, they're really psyched for me to come along with them to see things that I wouldn't have been able to see if I wasn't in black makeup. All right, so I want Rose, Rose to come and experience a true tradition, the kickback. It's like when you go to my house. That's what we talked about last time. Yeah, there's yeah. one. Oh, yeah. There's one girl on this who looks like she may also secretly be in blackface. Yeah. She is very. Holy shit. Uh, it's maybe racist to say. I don't mean it to be. She has very white features. She's got um, uneven skin tone like a motherfucker. Yeah, it's very awkward. Uh, so she wants a white girl to come out and hang out at a kickback. I don't think those are things anymore. I think you just hang out yeah. with people. They died. I don't know, though. I'm white. So, you know. We got to ask our black listeners. Yeah. <laughs> How often do you guys kick back? Let us know in the comments. We get fucking <laughs> shot tonight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you go to somebody's house and you just kick back? All right. I want to see Rose take the bus from Inglewood to over here. Damn. And see how many times she gets hollered at and see how, what manner she gets hollered at. You know? I want to see Rose get sexually harassed on a bus. Yeah, I want to see a bunch of men grope her, bottle her, and then send her home feeling less than herself. <laughs> if I like Rose to experience a long, tedious day at the hair shop. Mm. Yes. I have. I want to see Rose run up to a security guard and reach into her purse like she's going for a gun. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see Rose have to struggle every month just to make $500 to pay the rent and still not be considered for food stamps because I make too much money. I want to see Rose go into a retail store and make awkward eye contact with the employees that work there while quickly looking down, almost as if she's putting something in her purse. I want to see Rose have to deal with ingrown pubic hair. <laughs> Made I know friends. you got straight pubes. 
in the poetry circle, dynamics are actually starting to flourish, and they let me in in a different way had I just been Rose, white, and me. Great, great. Yes, they roast at you, Rose. <laughs> Yo, I gotta say, uh, I mean, Rose has uh, taken her her position at the bottom of the totem pole, well, you know, in stride, you know, good for her. But, uh, you know, I gotta say, dude, Rose, how old is Rose? It's fine. Go ahead. Dude, I'd fucking nail white or black rose. She's 16. Um, That's legal in Barcelona. (laughs) Next next (laughs) clip. Uh, Let's see. I'm using this new computer. Hold on. Hold on. Where the fuck is my clip? Oh, no. Probably in your gat, bro. Hold on. Hold on. All right. Next clip. Uh, Devin, who is a, a black kid the, in the group. The gay guy? No, he, I don't think he's a gay guy. And that guy's not gay. He just talks real fast. He's non-binary. Um, <laughs> Devin is a white guy, or is a black guy, takes white girl to the neighborhood. I understand we know her name's Rose. We know the father's name is Bruno. But let's try and, uh, for the audio listeners, let's really, let's try and keep it white girl White mm-hmm. father, white mother, whatever it is. So there's a uh, black kid named Devin. He's going to take a white girl to the neighborhood. Okay. The reason that I make up today is because after class, Devon is going to show me around. Oh, his Devon, name. my my deepest, oh, bro, my bye. deepest and sincere apologies, Devon. I apologize Devon. for that. Bro, he's a good guy. That never worked. <laughs> hey, how you doing? All right. All right. Just walking down the street as a black girl with a black guy. The attention just by being black in a black community is so different. What's up? I heard you say DC. Yeah, I go to Howard University out in DC. I love DC, man. Did you really? Yeah. Yeah, I heard, man. I love it too. There's yeah. a lot of uh, intriguing young brothers and sisters like yourself. You're right. Chop this city. Leave. That's what they call it. Five o'clock, all five people leave the city. Yeah. Wow. So we- I was really surprised at how quickly race was brought up. Stay strong. Right? <laughs> I got you. I got you. I got you. I Black That's people are always awesome. bringing up race. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What, watch this line. Take care of the queen and looked at me. He addressed us as brother and sister. Take care, okay? <laughs> no, he didn't. He didn't address them as brother and sister. He yeah. said brothers and sisters, you know? Yeah, I think... Uh, I don't think he, he meant... misinterpreted f- it. I mean, it's still a nice way to speak to somebody. It's nice talk, but... Uh, I mean, brothers and sisters is a lot nicer than honey, you yeah, know? But it's not. But I think she thinks it was f- familial. Yeah. No, 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 no. No, yeah, she's an idiot if she thinks collo- that. Colloquial. She, she, nev- she never saw a black comedy before. Mm. Like, really? Oh, oh. well, later on, we will be visiting a black comedy club. Just so oh, you're boy. aware. Um, Christ. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he's not present in this episode. Um <laughs> All right. Yeah, how, if he was real, how did this series get made? <laughs> um, for the third clip here, we have black woman meets some whiteies, reveals why she joined the show. So this is the black mother, and uh, we're going to go over why she joined the show. Now, I think we agreed, right? So far, winners and losers on this show. The black mother is the one who's, like, taking no oh. shit. Yeah, she, dude. Yeah, yeah. She, uh, she, uh, she was probably a plant from Ice Cube. He's like, you're going to keep this fucking show running, <laughs> god damn it. <laughs> it's, po- it's not possible. That's a funny line. But um, the losers, so far, we have the white mother as the loser. Now, Ooh, she constantly loser. puts her fucking white foot in her dumb white mouth. She's always saying something about, you know, like, oh, I, I, I just think, um, you know, I'm trying I just to think fit since in. black people have a propensity naturally towards violence, we should just be on alert. It's, you know, it, don't you? It's yeah. crazy. Yes. But we're going to get a heel turn in this episode. So stay okay. tuned. All right. Because we're going to get some good stuff here. We I, got- I like how this sister is is just an idiot loser, too. But you're still rooting for her. You know, the, you sis- just want the daughter. Her- yeah. or Yeah. The daughter. daughter you yeah. wanted it to just like you want her to be like, all right. Yeah. Come on. You, you know what? It. Again, you will see. I think she is trying. Yeah. I do think she's trying. We are burning a lot of time, so let's, let's let's go for it. Yeah, let's get through a couple of these quick. 
White America to me is white people who have their own culture. And the only way you'd be accepted by white America is if you Rice. adapt to their culture. Well, I love your shoes. Where did you get those? Where did you purchase those? Yes. I like how she corrects her her her. To her um her words there where did you get oh shit that's not what white people say <laughs> where did you purchase those fellow white yeah i talk like chris rocks white people yeah <laughs> I, I like that too i i like even more how her skin is gray yes but we've talked about this in previous episodes as well the black mother um yeah she's got the worst she, no fucking job yeah well she got no 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 the black mother Got the second worst paint job on the show. Who the got the worst white one mother? They gave her like real like nappy oh, hair yeah. and she <laughs> looks, afro, yeah. yeah, like if they put the wrong clothes on her, you'd be like, oh, that's the woman that lives at the bus stop, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, that's just soot. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. They're bling bling. <laughs> I call them bling bling shoes. I bling bling yeah. shoes? Whoa, what does that mean? Bling bling. Wait, I've heard. Oh, okay. A lot okay. of dazzle, you know, fun. Okay. <laughs> I did this project because I wanted my son to know how it is to adapt to white America. But to me right now, Nicholas is not really getting the whole concept of that we're trying to do. I just hope that he does get something out of this. I really do. He's okay. not. He's, uh, well. He's not getting anything out of it. He's getting an opportunity to meet Ice Cube once <laughs> for five minutes in a trailer. Oh, I don't know. Okay, there we go. All right. Uh, minimize that. All right. So, clip four. Again, we got 18 clips to burn through here. So Not 18 more. No. 14 more. 14. <laughs> All right. So, <clears throat> uh, black kid and white girl go to an etiquette class. This should be fun. Shenanigans in Sue. Yeah, exactly. Today I'm going to be putting on my makeup, and Rose is going to come with me to an etiquette class. You only have one opportunity to make a first impression. One. So we're going to start with posture. Etiquette class is basically a class that teaches you how to walk proper. They teach you how to talk to people right and, you know, greet people, especially big people like businessmen and major people, corporations or whatever. I don't know. Say your name. <sighs> Nick. You don't want to sound like you're... <laughs> okay. Wait. So he's nervous about what his name is. Yeah. Okay. All right. Not a great clip. Mm, yeah. The next. I guess one. Nick's just an idiot. That's probably what you're thinking when you cut that clip. You're probably like, "Oh yeah, this guy's an idiot. He doesn't know his name." You know, I think I was just setting up because the next one is black kid has had enough of these honkies. Reminds us of how annoying oh, white teenage yeah. boys are. I see. Yeah. Prologue. Let's yep. see what happens. Yeah, Let's just, see the shenanigans ensue. It's just a little setup. Just a little setup. Why is this taking? It's taking so long. There we go. I fucked up. My bad. Oh, okay. Oh, Christ, these kids are ugly. Yeah. <laughs> kids from the etiquette class, I mean, we're the same age, but, but the dudes, I really care less for. Okay, so I want you guys to stand up, squeezing your cheeks. <laughs> okay, the etiquette class is not just a white kid thing. Arm? It's a rich white kid thing. Nick, you totally dropped everything. Uh, Nick, Nick, I'm not going to tell you this. <laughs> So the white kids trying Ugh, to, yeah, yeah. Christ. He's, Dude, I would love to beat the shit out of that kid uh, as an adult, you it's know? It's going to get better. Um, but yeah, he lets the black, he's, he does that thing that a lot of people did when we were fucking 13 or 14, where you're like, hey, bud, I'm not going to tell you again. It's looking back at it. It's so obnoxious. Yeah. Oh. How cunty is it when men still do that as fucking adults, though? You know, oh. like smug, arrogant dweebs like this who would get the shit knocked out of them by anybody like this guy could like you've always said before, like, I'll but I'll be the one to make the point. Like, you never know. Somebody could know jujitsu or something and you'll fucking be like, oh, I don't care, dude. I'll fuck up a nerd. <laughs> like that's your guy right there. That fucking kid is that guy. I don't care how much jujitsu that kid knows. I'm going to break his legs off and yeah. shove him up his ass, you know? <laughs> Next clip here. A black kid wishes upon a star for something. It's a quick clip. How you doing? 
That's good. Not well. No. That's um. Annoying. <laughs> the, the dude is just annoying. Oh, oh. The guys. The kids in etiquette class were bugging me. They thought they were being funny. I just wanted to be myself. God, I was, I was just black right now. Oh. He said, he said uh, if you couldn't hear that very well, he said he wishes he was black right now. What, what would happen if he was black right now, I wonder? Well, you know, he'd be, I guess, uh, according to Tucker Carlson, predispositioned, predisposed, predisposed. He'd be shooting him. Yeah, he'd be shooting him or fist fighting him or something like that or leaving a family nah. of kids. Whatever Fox News would have you believe. Dance battle him. <laughs> Dance battle him. Uh, all right. Here is clip seven. White girl and white woman. No, white guy. Fuck. I fucked that up. Okay. White guy and white woman prepare for a date. White guy panders as he always does. Um, I will tell you this episode, this episode is a real strong Bruno white guy episode. Okay. Okay. And so by, he's going to call in his privilege or what? Oh, it's just embarrassing all around. It's not good. It's not good. Looking forward to it. I am starting to miss Bruno. He and I used to be very kissy and very funny, and this has been just the most stressful situation. We used to fuck every so day. So tonight, yeah. we are going to go on a date together. Well, hopefully we can let off some steam and Blacks. maybe even connect with each other. Tonight, Carmen and I are going to go see some black comics, and frankly, I hope they trash white people. I think it'd be a lot of fun to watch. <laughs> he's, such, he's such a pandering jerk off, What man. the fuck, dude? Yeah, you know, I wasn't even aware about these fucking guys who just love to suck black people's dicks until fairly recently when I started looking at Twitter. Mm -hmm. And I see all these like, oh, I want the black new world order. I'm a white guy, but I'll let a black dude fuck my wife and fucking beat me up because black people are superior. And I'm like, oh, my God, this sounds really dangerous. If this spreads, you know, <laughs> yeah. look, there is absolutely nothing wrong with liking black people. It's totally yeah. cool. You know what you really is embarrassing? It's shitty and you shouldn't do it is when all you do is fucking rip on your own race. To, yeah, it, you know what it was? There's a character. I never really watched it. I only saw it like sporadically. Did you ever watch the Boondocks? I have seen it maybe a handful of times, 10, 20 times. There's maybe. a character named Rufus, I think. He's a black guy. He's got a fucking wonk eye. And he uh -huh. hates black people. He thinks yeah, they should he be does. back in yeah. shackles or shit like that, right? Yeah, he's a modern day Bill Cosby. That and and that character is meant to be, you know, like the Uncle Tom type stereotype and like, you know, oh, look how embarrassing it is that a person would turn on their own race. That's what these white people are doing. Like, hey, hey, it's great that you support people of color and you, you know, you you want to, you know, help them out and do this and that whatever. But yeah. it doesn't mean you need to necessarily trash your own race, okay? And if you do it, at least be fucking funny about it, Bruno. <laughs> All he's right. not even making his own jokes. He's going incognito as a black guy, and he's going to sit amongst black people and laugh about how shitty white people are and be like, ha! <laughs> yeah, they are fucking terrible, huh? You know, what a <laughs> fucking stand up guy. All right. These are longer clips. You tell me if you want to pause at some point. Uh, yeah, just let it let it play through. Let's see what happens. White parents go to comedy club. White guy is once again out of the loop. I'm really excited about seeing these guys perform tonight. I've actually dabbled in performance myself. Of course you did. By the way, he's also dabbled in performance himself. I don't, I don't know if you know that or not. Yeah, fucking tapping that ass. I used to want a man that could whine and dine and take care of me. Shit, now I just be glad to find one that could take care of his damn self. I got to sit incognito uh. with blacks, laughing and crying about the black. By the way, there's nothing wrong with calling them blacks, I guess. It, it sounds hard. Doesn't it? It's like yeah. Jews, man. Like, hey, yeah. you know who we need to absolutely send money to and support and take care of in the Middle East? The Jews. Fucking Arabs, too. Probably okay. deserve a little fucking support. Well, huh? that's not that's not the point I was trying to make necessarily. Throwing a fucking in front of it definitely well, makes just... it sound more aggressive. All right. Well, let's just get to it. Like, let's just agree that uh, Arabs... And Jews both deserve our support. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, I agree with half of that. <laughs> Maybe none of that, but that's fine. That's okay. Um, all right. So we're at a black comedy club now. God damn. I wish they got found out as being in black. Oh, exposed right uh, here in front of all these people who may or may not have firearms with them. <laughs> Experience. If you ain't white, you a nigga. I don't care what you call yourself. Puerto Rican, Mexican, Jamaican, now we all the same. George Bush don't see nothing but us and them. And if you ain't us, nigga, you them. It was definitely interesting. I took note of the fact that here we are in a um, comedy situation, more of an observation. and they are using yeah. the N word. She's she's the Carlin of fucking uh, yeah. black open mics. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just laying it down how it is. Yeah. Now I will point out, Bruno's about to do a heel turn here. A heel turn in wrestling is when you take a good guy and make him into the bad guy. Yeah, I had a feeling that was going to happen when he got up close to the comedy. I, I feel like they're going to strike a uh, a nerve. Mm -hmm. They're going to hit something personal for Bruno, and he's going to be like, okay, well, they're taking it too far. This is fucking racism now. Talk directly into the crown of your mic. Let me hit I'm going to talk into the crown of your fucking boner. Um, comedy situation, and they are using the N-word regularly. <laughs> I'm learning. Black people only dance when we read it. We only dance when we try on new clothes. We uh, Frankly, a lot of it went over my head. I just didn't understand the uh, <laughs> jokes they were saying. It was, it was almost like going to a different country where, it, you know, it's a completely different culture, and they're speaking of things that I just don't have a knowledge of. Fine <laughs> phrase. <laughs> it was frustrating because I wanted to, because I knew it was funny. I, know I wanted to laugh so hard because I knew this was funny, but I just didn't know why it was funny. I, heard, I couldn't laugh. I heard them saying the N-word, so I wanted to laugh because I knew it was hilarious. But I didn't yeah. get all the other words around it, so I couldn't laugh. Because only a certain percentage of the sentences were funny. Because that was all that had the N-word in it. Literally the only word I heard all night was the N-word. <laughs> yeah. And then just a bunch of gobbledygook, to be honest with you. <laughs> I mean, that, again, more more of just a, a declarative statement than a joke. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. No, she look, look. It looks like it might might have been comedian. an no. It might have been. This was not Kevin Hart or fucking Chris Rock. No. Okay. All right. Uh, clip nine. White guy Bruno. Excuse me. White guy Bruno. Here's what I wrote down for this. White guy wants to say the N word in all caps. So fucking bad. <laughs> All right. Let's see. It's brimming at his lips. He just wants to say it more than anything in the world. I wonder if it's just like uh, he heard it so much. Now he's got to do it. Or, uh, you know, he just... It, he he's it, I don't understand. Didn't he already say it? He said it all the time. Yeah. yeah. I like. OK, let's see what he's got going on here. I wish they'd done, you know, more white jokes, frankly. I, I thought, I thought that, that, that's, that's what I know, I know. Ah, ah. That white stuff and y'all going to be happy. Oh, shit. Yeah. These fucking white black face <laughs> motherfuckers went to a black comedy show <laughs> and demanded more <laughs> white jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. All right. You got to listen to this. This is the funniest part of the whole thing. Oh, uh, it gets so much better. It gets <laughs> so <shit>. much better. <laughs> so funny. Well, that we, that we watch this whole comedy show. And everybody's saying, nigga, 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 nigga. And we get in the car. Oh, oh it's funny when they said the N word. It just seems so funny to me. There is so much on that word. Uh, the whole thing. What's your feeling about it? It's like this fear. We don't have the right to use that. It's completely different if they want to and they find comfort or release in sharing that because they've shared the pain around it. It just seems really he's false. He's fucking phony. mad. Yeah, dude, dude he's look, he looks like he looks like OJ on the way to fucking stab Ron <laughs> Goldman to death. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's got a waiter on his mind. Uh, but, you know, the problem is he's doing what he's done that thing where it's 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 almost like wokeness and racism is a circle. 
Okay. Yeah. And he's of, uh, the snake eating itself. He's yeah. so woke. I am so woke that I don't. God damn it! I don't want to give this word power at all. Let's just <laughs> all say it. Let me just call people it in traffic, and we'll get rid of the power behind this word. God damn it! <laughs> like they they don't want us to say it, but then they go and say it, and then they get mad when I say it in traffic. It just doesn't make any sense. It's like when woke colleges nowadays are like, look, what we're going to do is we're going to create safe spaces for black students. Only black students can sit over here. White students have to sit over here. And it goes, <laughs> you've gone full circle to segregation. Yeah. What are yeah. you doing? You really have. I, I don't understand how it's not just glaring people in the <laughs> face. But, yeah, he really does seem bent out of shape about the fact that they're I, – I think what it is is that he sees – what the significance is is what it, what it really is and he's downplaying it here he sees that the word does have a cultural significance and culture is more than what you just uh, choose to be culture is a shared experience you know so he's mad that he's not in 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 the club he just wants to say the word, you know, like that's really and now he's fucking pissed because he can't. I think that's oh, part man. of it. And I think the other part is, is like I said, I think he's so disgusted that it's such a bad word that it's like, don't you black people understand yeah. that if we just <laughs> if we just shout it all the time, it'll lose all of its power. And it's like, well, yeah. it's not really Do up to you to like determine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, no. You missed the point on that. He wanted them to roast white people. Oh, more. I know. Oh, no, oh, no. Okay, I got okay, okay, that. Okay, yeah. sorry. But sorry, now, yeah. now he's gone even further <laughs> circle and he's like, look, the whites have perfected this. All right. They took the slurs out and now they just <laughs> make op observations. All right. So just take the N words out and. And just start making observations. Oh, you guys always got greasy chins because you're eating fried chicken, right? Probably <laughs> putting watermelon seeds out, huh? You know, like, that's how you do it. You don't got to call each other N-words. Do it the smart way, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's finish this clip out. And hyper uh, paranoid to me. I mean, there's a distinction for me saying, oh, he's a, and then quoting a joke that you just heard all night yeah, long at a comedy club. I know, still. What if it's a Larry the Cable Guy joke and the punchline is <laughs> he's in, you know? Yeah, I think that's an acceptable form of comedy. <laughs> there is something about it. It's just, yeah, like, I'm just pointing out the right to say it. Right. Okay. I think it's very important that Bruno and I both grow to a similar extent through this project because otherwise I think it's going to be hard to relate to each other later. Or else I'm not sure we'll be able to fucking blackface anymore. All right. Clip number 10. We have black woman, white girl hang out together and discuss family i don't know awesome. that this is a great clip the rest are i mean there's some real fucking fire coming up some bangers oh all right well yeah oh well, yeah, yeah let's, let's play through this we ease us into it build the narrative at least yeah. you know but i think this clip is a good example shows a good thing of i really do think the white girl rose is trying you know, mm -hmm. I do. Oh, I, I think she's been genuine from the start. Probably the only one. Whereas I feel like Bruno is hardening. A uh, yeah. white guy yeah. is hardening to his this, stances. This dude came into this like just like wanting to praise black people. And and he wanted to do this to honor the superiority of black people. And he's going to come out of it a fucking neo-Nazi. <laughs> yeah. I just I'd like to see about 10 years from now, a man like Donald Trump run for the presidency. You know, yeah. I don't know. This is just me. I'm Bruno. I just think if we had our own ethno state. <laughs> yeah. They can't be angry at us if they're over there and we're over here. You know, it, it, they've got their own space for them. Call it a state if you want. I'm not saying stay in it. I'm not saying it's not going to be comfortable. We just build a real big boat. OK, you could put luxury rooms in it and then we just ship it back. You know, we just send it on back to the motherland <laughs> where they'll flourish. <laughs> Rose is a really good kid. 
seen her went out grocery shopping and it was pretty cool. She's really starting to understand what this opportunity is all about and she's actually making an effort to learn what it is to be black. It's like there's become the white family phenomenon which is like divorced parents, you've got step family. Like white people, at least in my opinion, have become so alienated from what the family is about. Black culture rings to me like getting back to the basics. Mom, Papa, <laughs> there's a home there. When I started elementary school, every the summer, three bears. I went to my grandmother's <laughs> every <laughs> summer. And would you like aunts and uncles come there? Well, they all lived in the same town. Did you like when you aunties you know. and uncles are in Bel Air mm -hmm. or? Oh yeah, I was I was just going for like the fucking the monotony of it all like when you went to your grandma's did your aunts and your uncles come too <laughs> what about your cousins and how about any family friends it gets there so i saw like everybody i have like I have a one, ton of cousins one cousin you need your family like they tell oh, you yeah. about yourself oh yeah one of the most touching things about black culture to me is how their bond revolves around their family and their roots yeah, that's great, dude, when your fucking family puts cigarettes out on your neck. <laughs> Clip 11. <laughs> uh, white guy is tired of hanging out with broke-ass comics. Um, <laughs> he tries to find himself a real black dude. I am white, so I see the world through white eyes, if you will. I want to meet successful African Americans to see what it oh is exactly God. that brought them to that level of success. To hear what their secret was, to hear what their perspectives were that enabled them to 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 rise. You should be down in the dirt right now, but you <laughs> live in a mansion. You're in a high rise on the east side when you should be sucking dick for crack cocaine. Jesus. How'd you do it? <laughs> Eyes. Today I'm going to meet with a man by the name of Fernando Pullum. What's up? <laughs> I'm looking for a black guy. Fernando, are you there? Yeah. Mr. Pullum. I'm yeah, real I'm black sounding nice gentleman. Black guy. He comes out and he's yeah. just a span. Hello? <laughs> How are you yeah. doing? I married into this white family. I think they might be Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> I get too pregnant after too much tequila one night. <laughs> mm. All right. It's okay, though. They got a nice house. <laughs> Fernando, who is a very successful musician. Fuck, he's wow. black. As shit. Although I will be in black makeup. I don't. I, maybe it's possible. I don't know. Hey, fuck, he's black as shit. All right, Jesus Christ. <laughs> He'll be aware that I'm a white guy. You look black. How you doing, man? Thank you. So do you. <laughs> uh, nice to uh, Well, thank you very much. He teaches music. He's been the teacher of the year, traveled around the world playing his music, and he has a couple of gold albums to his name. You know, we've opened the Playboy Jazz Festival four times, and we've played in Cuba, so we, we've done a lot. That's <laughs> cool. I'm going to be an open-minded student today, so that perhaps he can teach me something that will change my perspective on things. You know, I know people say, walk this way, blah, blah, blah. I don't subscribe to that. I just no, believe. I'll just be me. Yeah. Yeah, do, do that, Bruno. Yeah. Motherfucker. Hey, the guy looks like uh, J Jaleel Pullum. I don't know who that is. J Jaleel White from Family Matters. Oh. That looks like fucking Urkel. <laughs> well, more some more of a Stefan look. Well, I'll give him, I'll yeah. give him that. He, he does get, got a Stefan look to him, but definitely an Urkel vibe. Now, this is a bit of a longer clip, okay? Right. The white people etiquette class comes over and the black kid reveals himself. Oh, my God, dude. Are they going to fucking string him up? He's one of them. Get that boy. Yeah. <laughs> he infiltrated our circle. Brandon, get your rope. Oh, what is another white name? This is what we've been preparing for, folks. We knew it was happening. Brandon. We knew they were trying to get in. We know our secrets. <laughs> they, they're, they're these rich white kids from Bel Air. And they're, Brandon, get well, your rope. Brent, pull your pickup up to the front. Yeah. yeah, well, that's the whole thing, dude. It's like the white etiquette secrets is the secret to white people's success. Like if the if the blacks get the knowledge from the white etiquette class, they could infiltrate the highest of oh, society. Oh, you know, they're not letting that happen. God forbid someday they could become president. Ooh. Yeah. They, Ooh. Or they could fucking, there could be a black billionaire. <laughs> Fuck. Give me the heebie jeebies. <laughs> Hey guys! Hi. 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 
<laughs> Nick and I invited the etiquette class over to the house. I think we're just gonna hang out. Tour? Yeah, tour sure, tour. why not? This we had told him that we were doing a project about families living together. Um, this is my um, bedroom, which has been basically set up I, for me. This is actually Nick's. He got bling bling. Yeah, that was set up for the room, as most of the stuff is. With the white girl, he's got bling bling. Yeah, I knew so many fucking white girls who said that shit in high school. I mean, still now, like I I meet thirty year old women who still think that that's not the most cringe thing that a woman in their position could do well, we in that, any situation. You know, we saw that video of that sixty year old woman with the shoes earlier. Remember, it was her bling bling shoes. Oh yeah, but this is I'm I'm saying now. I still meet thirty year old women who are white, who say that, and it's like, come on, dude, your mom made that embarrassing, you know? Yeah, but what trailers do they live in? Oh, no, that's the thing. They're usually affluent. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Embarrassing. Embarrassing, I know. Yeah. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Barbershop, barbershop, the Players Club, next Guys, Friday. Guys, come on. Yo, they gave this, they set this kid's room up. If they really did set his room up, they gave him fucking bling bling. They put on fucking, they're like, here, here's some movies you might like. Here's Barbershop. Here's <laughs> next Friday. Here's the Players Club. Here's a bunch of movies with Ice Cube. They sent, a, they sent a PA out. They're like, look, if there's a black person on the cover, just grab it, okay? The DVD and bring it home, okay? This kid will watch it. Was it was part of the deal where it was just like, like only Ice Cube movies, you know? I don't know. Were there any? I don't know that there were any Ice Cube movies there, though. Barbershop and oh, Next Friday fair are enough. Ice Cube movies. I guess I was thinking of the other one, Players Club. Ice T. I've never seen that. Uh, oh, Players Club is written by Ice Cube, and it's a piece of shit fucking movie. <laughs> Man, it's bad. Okay. Holy fuck. I think we talked about it on one episode. The last scene of the movie, a guy shoots a bazooka at a strip club and blows it up. <laughs> I don't remember that. I've never seen it. It's not uh, a good movie. Okay. All right. My my mistake. I stand corrected on that. You are correct. <laughs> What's going on here? They oh, kept hi. snooping around the house, and I realized that having them over was a big mistake because they don't know that Nick is really black. <laughs> I'm like, do you remember when you got the TV? Join the festival. Hey. Hey, Nick. What's up? What's up? What's up? Hey. 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 You just got it? We got it done last week. Are they fake? Are they pirate earrings? <laughs> no. <laughs> so it's a little hard to hear. They're questioning. He's got his earring in. It's oh, his not... black kid's mumbling. Yeah. <laughs> there was sort of a what's going on kind of feel in the air. And Nick and I knew we had to talk. Hey. 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 Oh, At first, I wasn't really going to reveal myself God. to etiquette class. Damn. First of all, I'm just really the into skin the skin tone. Like, Holy yeah, shit, it's bad. Folks, I, if you're listening, you have to appreciate what this kid must look I'm like gonna to put strangers. A, I'm going to put a link to the video in the episode description if you're listening to this. Yeah, it's insane. His neck is the most Caucasian <laughs> part about him. And then his face is like an off beige mannequin tone. His eyelids are blue. Um, his lips are <laughs> he does, white. He looks like he's wearing yeah. eyeshadow. Yeah, yeah, dude. His ears are brown and beige and gray, like all three colors. This fucking kid is a mess, he, man. He, Holy he, shit. He looks like a sickly boy. Yeah, oh. he does, he's jaundiced like a motherfucker in the face. And then his neck, you know, he looks like he just uh, ran a marathon or something with all the f tendons and jowls and stuff all defined and healthy looking. Weird. Weird fucking makeup. I, 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 I got to appreciate how hard it is to change somebody and make them look convincing. But come on, dude. This looks phone, dude. This looks like they're day 60 of shooting and they're just fucking done <laughs> dealing with this black kid every morning. I have something to admit to you guys. You have MS? <laughs> <laughs> no. You have jaundice? No. I'm black. Oh. I don't see it. Yeah, you, you look just kind of sick you look most of the time. Purple. Yeah. <laughs> the white kids aren't funny, though. The black kids would be roasting them. Like, your mama looked like she fucked Grimace. Yeah. Your mama must be the Crypt Keeper because you a reanimated corpse. <laughs> Snooping around the house, and I've been just like, holy shit. Oh, yeah, the black stuff. Yeah, everything. <laughs> everything. It was like, okay, they've been in your room. Oh, they've seen this and seen that. They kind of know. So we just go out. I told them, me and him and agree just, I'll go out there and just be straight with them and tell them I'm black. So we came in downstairs and me and Rose, you know, we were telling everybody. So really, we've been here and we're doing makeup tests. 
And the truth is, I'm not white. Oh, my God. That's a take. Yeah. <laughs> kid was drinking a drink. <laughs> you didn't touch his cup, did you? Ooh, yeah, he's like fucking freaking. Out. You fucking touched me, dude. Yeah, <laughs> we high fived. Oh man, I was gonna hug you when I left. What the fuck? <laughs> and the girls all start getting fucking wet. Yeah, oh, the girls really? Like, oh, oh wow, really? Okay, yeah. is it? Can show show me your room. Yeah, is it as <laughs> is it as big as they say? Or oh man, that's got to be disappointing for them to, though, um, because. Then this kid's not attractive, you know, like, so they're going to be all up in arms like, oh, he's black. Maybe he looks good under this freak paint, you know, but then they're just going to get some little pinhead looking motherfucker. <laughs> he does have a pinhead. Angry in most situations. Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, what? That's all. Oh, my God. Yeah, in the nose, surprise, the whatever. In the, face, like- in the lips, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I totally see it. Yeah, and the big puffy lips and nose, I see it. Okay, okay. Step your leg, is it? He's not a zoo exhibit, you guys. <laughs> what color's your dick, though? <laughs> Roll up your pants a little more. Should hang past your knee, right? Hey, that's Burst. a harmful stereotype, and it puts an un- undue amount of pressure on black men to meet a certain stereotypical uh, need for women to feel satisfied. And uh, that that's unacceptable because statistics show black men, their dicks aren't that much bigger than white men but on average. It's only about two to three inches per male penis. But do you have a big dick? I mean... It's about 17 feet. <laughs> oh, you know. He's not a good estimator. Like, no, no. Up here. They saw it. He's black, you guys. Oh, he's black. Like, That's so cool. I'm just like, I'm 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 like, i Nobody's ever been like, oh, Okay, I got into a situation with a kid in school and he called me a nigger. What? I whooped his ass in front of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's all good, though. It's all good. So, so. Is that the only time anyone's called you a, a mean name? <laughs> I can't just say the word. Is that the only time anyone ever just called you a fucking <laughs> mean name? Mean, mean. No, I, I, I would like him to be like, no. One time, someone said I was a poo poo head. <laughs> yeah. One time, someone called me dumb and said that I talk real slow, like I'm autistic or something. There was this other time, someone said my mom's neck looked like a pack of hot dogs. <laughs> I whooped his ass too. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right. <laughs> Fucking guy. He's gonna fuck all our women. Let this play out. The white kids are about to get brazen. <laughs> Oh boy. Name. I can't just say the word. Just go ahead. Just go ahead and say it. No. It doesn't bother. Like it doesn't bother. Yeah. Like it like bothers me. Yeah. Have you ever been with a white girl? I dated plenty. Really? Oh, really? Really? Oh, really? It's just shocking. To- I feel like Nick got placed into a situation that was quite superficial, and I felt a little bit disheartened that that was how. White people were being represented to Nick. If you want to pass white, God, do not wear bling. Never wear bling. Never wear bling. The girls came in my room, you know, just looking around and, uh, you know, giving me tips off for white guys. I would have to say number one thing to be being white, articulate your words and don't talk like a black person. Oh, it's all about your body movements, how you walk. You got to keep it, you know, I'm white. Hey, how's it going? How's the stocks going? You know, you're white. No, this is how the white guy dance. No, no, uh, back and forth. This is what I do. This is what I do. You know? <laughs> Oh, you know, it's gonna be hopeful and everything, but basically everything they told me, I kind of got already. Yeah, this is Jesus. <laughs> 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 uh, Please don't touch the bandana. No, I just wear that because it's my style. Okay, okay, little messy. Talk to me for you. Holy shit, dude. Uh, These fucking 
bastards. Where where are they? What what law firm are these fuckers representing now? Like <laughs> yeah, Jesus exactly. Christ, holy fuck! It's, oh my uh, god! You know um, that was the wrong clip. Two from now is when the white kids get real brazen. Dude, I was I was kind of just shocked they were willing to just put on this kid's do rag and and just mimic every black comedian and fucking you know, a uh, rap video they'd ever seen. That was very uncomfortable. Um, let's not forget about poor Rose. Um, now that everyone knows her boyfriend's black, it's she's going to have competition. It's, it's uh, she wants it to be. Oh, yeah, she does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah she desperately wants to feel. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, but but now she's got competition. You know, she's got these other little bitches she's got to fight off. I love. Um, do you think every, like, gender studies woman major or feminist or whatever you think that that that's where it all stems from there was one boy that she couldn't have who got taken by other women so now she's on a crusade to define womanhood the way she sees it i mean that was too smart of a question for me because i think there's maybe legitimacy to it so yes maybe oh, okay. <laughs> uh, it's possible i don't I mean, know it is a joke but maybe all women are just fucking simplifiable yeah this is another long clip this is three and a half minutes Go for it um here's what i I'm, have i'm gonna shut up I'm okay shut up. i want to hear these fucking black people well no this is white people this is uh here's what i have written down for this clip uh white guy period slavery period okay can we just get over it period oh, oh man. question mark i'm sorry you didn't leave anything to spoilers, huh? I mean, that's kind of like where Neil Stevenson will write. He, he'll do like two sentences before a chapter. It's like chapter 14, where so-and-so makes their way to the bus station. You know, he tells you what's going to happen in the chapter, and then you read the chapter. You, you didn't – you just let me know. All right. And then uh, one last line, <clears throat> where's the dads? Question mark. Oh, come on. You could – that's a stinger too. That's a oh man, you could you probably saved another one. I bet you there's a third one, you fucking scoundrel. No, no. But Bruno, the white father, is uh back talking to Fernando, the uh Hispanic um black guy or something. Oh, Fernando's gonna just agree with him, probably. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they always throwing stuff around, and they make a lot of noise in movie theater. I don't like Usually it. Usually, black people they order the food and they don't pick it up. <laughs> Some people say it's prank. I think they're just being lazy. They just think they don't have a car and they miss the bus because they're so lazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let this one play out. Let this one play out. <laughs> The thing that I, I have frustration with is the black culture blaming, you know, the whole slavery thing. And you owe us an affirmative hey, action. And it right seems to go bat. from generation to generation to generation of somehow we're responsible for those in the black community that are less successful, less affluent. And um, I, I just come from a place of, you know, how, how long can you continue to play the race card? and come up from a place of pity instead of, you know what, do what you need to do so that when you go out in the world, you can get a job. And that's been frustrating for me. Well, you know, I came from very tough uh, uh, circumstances. Both my parents were drug addicts and I pulled myself up from the inner city. I have a master's degree in music and I, I worked very hard to get that. And I know racism exists. I personally do not let it hinder me. I ignore it. I choose to ignore it. But I know that I have to do certain things better than other people to have that same opportunity. I've been stopped several times driving down the street. You know, I had a police officer to tell me, hey, it looks like you're putting a gun in your glove compartment. I'm coming from school. It's assumed because I have this nice shiny sports car, I must be a, a drug dealer and I'm sitting on the sidewalk embarrassed that my students are going to see their teacher sitting on the sidewalk. What, am, what do I say? What do I say money? You know, I want... He's got all those gold records. Too. Oh, yeah. Gold <clears throat> yeah. records, though? How do... Okay. He's got to be a drug dealer, dude. Jesus Christ. Let it play out. <laughs> if you're black, you go through that. I don't. <sighs> Now, I also teach elementary school kids. 
hip hop is huge. Mm-hmm. Okay, you got the hat to the side, you got the bling bling, you got the pants half down your ass, you got this culture that is so promoted through this whole rap video thing that's going on. But I believe it begins in the home with mom and dad if he's around. Mm-hmm. Okay, on the in the black community. Blacks off, or the dads often take off, oh. guide their children in the right way. Mm-hmm. So I think there's a big lapse in the black community where, as a whole, there isn't a promotion of the values that you're talking about. He turns. The, the, oh my God! Fernando Holy turns shit. to the producers and he goes, "Did you bring me David Duke? What the fuck yeah. is this? Fuck, dude! It, it's just like, yeah, uh, you know, I went from thinking there was a racial." injustice and that's just a problem where you know there there must be a reason black people can't get ahead but now i see it's because they're a bunch of crybaby bitches <laughs> who don't want to work and you know if their fathers were around and not out smoking crack uh they would yeah, they're like oh, jesus christ man hey hey bruno maybe uh it's so funny because you know he was the one – the daughter didn't apply for this. The wife didn't apply for this. He saw this <laughs> casting opportunity, and he goes, I'm going to teach my family about how fucking progressive I am. I used to play a little street ball with a couple of black guys, uh, Jamal Bruno. and uh, Kyle. Bruno uh, was on a business trip in Atlanta, yeah. and he, <laughs> he saw a flyer for this hanging up next to a, a fucking Waffle House, and he pulled a little – detachable tab off and called it back at his fucking Hilton later that <laughs> night, you know? Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, Fernando's going to let him know what he really thinks. Finally, somebody steps up and says, finally, someone steps up and does the right thing. I should say that. I should say he says the right thing because oh, doing yeah, the right Fernando's thing. Fernando's the star right now, for sure. Doing the right thing would be for him to just drive his fucking fist into Bruno's mouth right now. And let them know, you know. Yeah. Hey, fucko. Yeah, that, <laughs> don't that's, talk to that's me. justice. Yeah. 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 <laughs> of the values that you're talking about. The way you make that statement, it's too large of a blanket that you're throwing sure. over the whole culture. And, and that in itself, to, to me, sounds racist. You know. Again, personal responsibility. Who's up there going, now, yo, why can't, why, why, why I just say, my statement? Yeah, yeah. Who's going, yo, 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 bitches and hoes, and this is, you know, I'm black, and I'm singing my song, and I'm doing Who's it. Who's saying I'm black? It's the wrong black guys say- or the white guys? <laughs> Fucking Bruno. Oh, my God. But pray, bring it back like 10, 15 seconds where he said bitches and hoes. That shit was funny. Okay. <laughs> Who's going yo, 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 bitches and hoes, and this is, you know, I'm black, and I'm singing my song, and I'm doing it. I just think that it's wrong to say any... You remember that Dr. Dre song off of uh, 2001? It was called Yo, 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 yo Bitches and Hoes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a banger, yeah. I, love it, that song. I think it was, some, it was Yo, 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 Bitches and Hoes. I'm singing my song, and I'm doing it, doing it, doing it. I think that's how it went. I don't remember, though. I think Nate Dogg was on that album. Uh, I'm not positive, though. All right, let's 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 finish this clip. Let's watch Fernando chew him out a little more. Yeah. Say any group of anything is all the same. I think that... Fernando felt that I just didn't get it, that I wasn't willing to look at, you know, certain things because I debated him on certain things. Bruno, because black people we don't can't agree on anything. Right. I just think you. <laughs> Hold on, let it play out. Let this play out, and then and then come. No, you're good. You're good. I know it's hard to not jump in, but we're not going to be able to hear you and and this properly. It it's it would For be sure. easier if we were in the same room and we could just make you know. The eye click and be like, pause, hold on. We can't agree on anything. I just think you're full of crap, though. I don't know how your wife can put up with you because I can, I sense that you'd be insensitive in other areas and not perceptive of how other people would uh, live and navigate through the world. I see, anyway. I, see, I see it as logic, but go, go right ahead. Your logic is illogical. I think he's a little frustrated with me. You know, yes, I'm willing to look at the racism and whatnot, but I'm a staunch, staunch in my opinion that, you know, ultimately, yeah, yeah, you have to make life what you want it to be. Holy shit, Bruno. Yeah. Wow. He really dug that hole, huh? Bruno is uh, Bruno's really going from a lovable uh, dork to fucking full on like 
Like, uh, Bruno you know, founded the new black world order. And then it just like, it got spiraled out of control out of his hands. And now he's like, Oh, I got to topple it. I got to <laughs> end it now. You know, Bruno's about three sentences away from going, you know, we technically paid for that Capitol building. I mean, <laughs> if, if we want to go in, we can fucking go in, you know? It, I mean, it's our building. <laughs> This is okay. This is a good clip. Uh, the white kids from the etiquette class call black kid a fun new nickname. Oh, Christ. No. See, that's how you set it up, dude. All right. Go you, for it. Yeah, it's sorry. Okay. I, it's okay. Yeah, sorry. I had dropped my weed thing and I don't want it to burn a hole in the carpet. I understand. You want to be bad. All right. You just listen to this. Let this play. Take yeah, care of what it. you need to take care of. No, I got you it already. Let's black. watch it. What? I like this chick. You talk black. She's just trying to get some dick, dude. That's but, her strategy. By the way, these chicks are children, but when they are adults someday, they're all going to be pretty attractive. Let's just put it's, it that way. Except for that one. I mean, she'll have an appeal. Don't mm -hmm. get me wrong. She's not going to be attractive. Okay. Fair enough. Fair uh -huh. enough. You talk black. What? You talk black. I talk black. You are black, but you're, I think you're trying to be sense. white. You talk black. All right. Well, I am black. After the kids came over, we went out together. Not, you already know I'm black, so I'll be myself. Yeah, but, but no, you're, but you're still trying to portray your white. You're white. white. I think that's 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 and the expression shit, nigga, I don't think a white guy does that <laughs> all the time. I don't think I've heard him say that. I haven't heard him say that once. Me neither. I don't know. I keep hearing that. over this. <laughs> you just said the uh, n-word. I don't care. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't care. I don't care. Because he doesn't care. No, but it bothers me. It doesn't matter if it bothers him. It doesn't matter if I'm black or not. It bothers me. And you it doesn't bother me as the kids use racial jokes because, you know, we all use racial jokes. It's just all funny games. There's That's certain true. people that get offended by it. I don't, yeah, I don't he's got a good I mean, point. That stupid like, one -on -one. fucking. And we're going at right, it big time, and then you use it. That's different. That's but we're you know, joking around, around whatever. Then you use it. It doesn't bother me at all. So it's an no. okay word to say around friends. It no, is. it's not. Though. Because he to, doesn't care. To you. Yeah, no, we, we use I'm it all saying, the time, so I'm it doesn't saying, matter. I ain't saying we as a we. All my black friends, they wave canes around. They're like, it's good to be a nigger. That's what my friends do. The best part is now we're going back in time and we're canceling people. So someone's going to find this kid who's undoubtedly an attorney somewhere. I mean, he he should have been canceled in 2006. Yeah, I know. He shouldn't he shouldn't have been able to get his fucking his uh, license to practice law. Fucking Christ, dude. These kids are are they're really brave. I, I'll, give, I'll commend them, you know, but Jesus Christ. They're just saying it. And this black dude, I get it. He's like trying to be like, oh, yeah, I'm cool with it or whatever. But come on, dude. We know you're going to use this against them later. They well, always do. You'll see. Uh, fun fact about this kid here. Do you know he actually did be, go on to become an attorney? You know That's who for? Surprise. Uh, uh, who for? Derek Chauvin. Oh, OK. Well, then he, he canceled himself. I'm kidding. He didn't do that. Let's just play. <laughs> the thing that upsets me is that I asked you guys not to say it, and you yet you you use it anyway. I haven't said you know? it in a long time. This was uh, you just said it like four seconds ago. All right, let me get out of my system. <laughs> I'm done, dude. No more. The rest of the night. Come on. No more, bro. Don't even worry about it. I won't Jesus. say it anymore. Uh, I'm just uncomfortable. I don't yeah, have any right? jokes. Yeah. I do have a joke, actually. That black kid looks like the still of Michael Jackson turning he around absolutely in the thriller does. video. Yep, he looks like Michael Jackson. You're a hundred percent right. But the ghoul Michael Jackson, like the 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 zombified Michael Jackson. We gotta we gotta get through these clips quick, but Go here's for it. how clip, many we got? We got four more, but they're a little bit long, so let's brush through them. Let's um, do this one. Here's clip fifteen. Black parents remount the black kid because uh, he allowed white people to call him the N-word. Oh, oh, my God. Yeah, they're going to whip his ass for this. How about that mother? Yeah, she is not going to take too kindly to her son being called the word by a bunch of white kids. Right. No. No. Fuck. Somebody can just come out and call you a nigga and it don't bother you. No. I found out that my son 
sat there and let a group of kids say the N-word to him and he responded to them that he didn't care, that he really didn't have an opinion about that. So then it wouldn't bother you if you chilling in your, you know, convertible car, police officer pulls you over because of the color of your skin and calls you nigga. It's okay, right? It, it wouldn't pops. bother you, right? Is that what you're telling me? You don't get it. I just got to instill into him the plight of the black American over time and make him understand the reason he can sit here and, and do the things he do and, and he can go free today and just date who he want to date. And that's good. That's beautiful. But I want him to understand why he can do that. I mean, it's just sad to me. It's sad. At the age of 16, you have to you explain sad why. Little... <laughs> And then you sit over there and act like you could care less. And I know you you hear us talking and you don't have shit to say. That's another thing that just pisses me off with you. Everybody got their own opinion. I just don't care. I understand, I understand where they're coming from about like the racism and everything. And everything black people had to go through and everything, but it, it doesn't bother me really. I can't believe I, I'm so ashamed of you right now. Even the little white girls were offended. And you weren't. What really upset me the most is the that, white girls. <laughs> you gotta let it play out. You gotta let it play out. And then afterwards was like, cause it you're you Okay, you're then stop get, pausing it. You're getting I'm pausing it only when you're talking. You're getting drowned out. That's the problem. I want you to get your comments no one in. No needs to hear me. You know, I'm sitting here trying to hammer home to Bruno, Carmen, and Rose that they're not getting it, they're not getting it, and then come to find out that my son is the damn one that's not getting it. You know what? Go upstairs. Go. I should have brought the neighbor's son. Go upstairs. Go upstairs. Draw what? a bath. Go upstairs. Watch Barbershop 2. <laughs> Learn about your ancestry. I'm tired. You know, I gotta say, <laughs> I'm tired of watching Barbershop again. Watch it again. Know who you are, son. Um, I gotta say, I feel for this black kid because I don't give a shit about my ancestry either. Like, honestly, like, it, it, I, I think if he wants to be all fucking black and be like, oh, my granddaddy was a slave, good for him. But I don't give a fuck about the plight of any of my ancestors. They can all suck my dick, dude. They didn't do shit for me to get me here except come in somebody or get cummed in. You know, fuck all them. Yeah, that's a good point. I agree with that. Um, now, I do have an Irish flag tattoo with a potato around it on one arm. Though, so, you <laughs> it's know. just a potato in red, white, and or <laughs> orange, white, and green. Yeah, yeah that's exactly what it is. Uh, black man takes black kid to barber shop. <laughs> The place where you educate your children. Okay, uh, so yeah, the movie's not enough. I'm going to take you and show you what yeah. it's like up close. Ice Cube's making me take my son to a barber shop because he's saying that's the ultimate learning experience. Nick also needs a haircut, so <laughs> killing two birds Ice with one stone. Ice Cube was mentioning this thing about a sequel to some movie. I don't know. It's more of a black thing. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, we're going to go get a haircut for it. <laughs> All right. Uh, this was a trip to the barbershop. Oh, we're at Millennium Barbershop. Nick was to get a little education today in blackness. What's up with you, man? How you want to hook up? Cut it down low, fade. Cut it down low, fade. You know, I'm going to tell you, yesterday, you know, he had some little white friends. Okay. And he thought it was cool for them to, you know, just be able to drop the N-word around and, and joke. Oh, that's not so, good So, because he's not used to racism, yeah, so yeah. he don't know what to look for. I try to tell him that, hey, that word, you know, exactly. it, 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 it's not a lot of power in their generation. But, that, you know, for me, I'm 40, so oh, yeah. I've been that through That was a fight word. Said, Even fight. another brother called you that. There you go. Yeah, that's not a joke at all, man. That's not a joke at all. We went through too much. He needs to learn a little bit more about his heritage, his culture. Um, I don't want him to fight behind the word. But I thought I do that want kid said a say, low hey. fade. Yeah, I don't know. What is this barber doing, man? <laughs> he stinks. He's not a good barber. <laughs> he's he's about as good as the makeup people are. They're just bullshitting yeah. this Nick kid. But also, yeah. 
don't you feel for the father where he's like, man, I got to take my kid to a barbershop just so some guy wearing gl- sunglasses indoors can explain to him that white kids shouldn't be calling him the N word. <laughs> like I, I, I can I, I got to talk to this fucking guy who looks like the only black character in a in a musical. Yeah, <laughs> I got to talk to this guy who's the only black guy in the E Street band while he cuts yeah. my kid's hair. Yeah, he looks like Clarence Clemens. Yeah. Fucking, oh. or, uh, what, what's it called? Yeah. Is that the dude? The fucking Jay Leno guy? No. Clarence Clemens is uh, the black guy in the Bruce Springsteen and the East Street Band. Oh, OK. I'm thinking of the guy who used to sit next to Kevin Jay Eubanks. Leno. Kevin Eubanks and just be like, er, 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 yeah, but he that's was right, Jay. He, that's right, Jay. He was bald. This guy's got dreadlocks. Dreads. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and it's like uh, I, I feel for the dad. Yes. But at the same time, I feel for the kid, dude, because. My fucking mom used to do this shit to me too, embarrass the shit out of me to fucking complete goddamn strangers, like take my dumbassery as a kid and just tell people about it in front of me, just random people and and embarrass me. And it's like, you got these two adults sitting here. One of them's got a, a mechanical razor blade stuck to your head and they're just laughing at you. You know, thanks dad. <laughs> you Appreciate don't, it. You don't get it. Do you dumbass kids? You're a dumb little black bitch, ain't you? Letting these white boys calling you that word, you fucking idiot. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what. If you think that's embarrassing, wait for the next clip. The next two clips get progressively more embarrassing. Um, I would say the final clip is the most cringe thing that has happened on this show. Um, mm-hmm. To the point that. I need you to indicate pause because you're going to want me to stop this. And I don't want you to talk over it. on the last clip. We got one more before that. OK, OK, let's go. I'll, I'll let you know. Um, there's not much more to this clip. The, the fucking, you know, the black guy from Dave Matthews band shaves his head some more and tells him not to let people call him the N word. Your son is straight Uncle Tom. <laughs> It'd be great if we started roasting the kid to the father <laughs> and the father's just like, OK, this is oh, not, yeah. not exactly no, what no, I was no, looking no, for. No, then his dad does the same thing that his fucking son did, but just like familially you know he's like yeah my son is a fucking idiot huh they're just roasting his kid doesn't stick up for his son at all you know has no respect for his son as, as a human as a child who doesn't know better his autonomy you know to make a decision to not care about the n-word you know it's just like the, it's the same fucking thing you know it's the exact same fucking thing show the barber your hands those are some real house hands yeah. show them your hands yeah Never known a day's work in his life, huh? <laughs> Slapping him on the back of the head and shit. <laughs> Real hard, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Here's the etiquette graduation dinner where the black parents are invited to it. What, why? They're not part of the club. And why are you having a graduation dinner? Yeah. What's the fucking point? I think it's just so these black people can stick out like a sore thumb. <laughs> Let's really embarrass them, huh? <laughs> hey, did you uh, have a graduation plan for this class? <laughs> Sir, it's an eight or eight hour class that we, we <laughs> yeah. threw together on a whim because Ice Cube called somebody, you know? Because that uh, guy from NWA asked us if we could just put something together real quick. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, you're going to have a graduation. Uh, get together like 40 families, no Greeks. Um. <laughs> All right, if you thought the last one was embarrassing, wait for this. Tonight is the big night. It's the final etiquette class dinner. Oh, thank you, Nick. Who is this Nick is going to show up at dinner without his makeup on. They went to the mall, tried on lingerie. It's the first time these kids will see him as himself. I don't know what they're going to say. I mean, they know I'm black, but I want them to see who I really am. Christine, okay. okay. Get really cool. One of those. One of those. Somebody wears that nice. Okay. Somebody wears that nice. Somebody wears that nice. Oh, I swear I didn't. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. That's Mouth. different. Wide open. <laughs> That's different. All the girls, I, like I said before, all the girls yeah. are just sopping wet, and all the guys are like, ew. Ew. Yeah, this, who is this fucking guy? Get him out of here. Hide the forks. They turn to him. They go, uh, valets are outside, actually. Oh, Nick, it's you. Nick. Oh, oh Nick. hey, buddy. Why don't you sit on this side? Yeah. Why don't you sit on they, that side? Away yeah, from me. Yeah. 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 They got him sitting over by the window and shit. 
Oh my god. You look that's great. That's different. Thank you. you look <laughs> different. That's different. That has a new look for sure. Something's I haven't different seen about that before. Yeah. Something's different about you. You look somehow more fatherless. It's odd because I know your father's over there, but strange. I trust you less. <laughs> I trust you less, but somehow I don't see you committing a crime like embezzlement, if that makes you feel any better. Uh, yeah, I, I see your crimes as more blue collar. <laughs> you really think he's going to be better oh looking white? Oh my god! I am better looking black, I told you. <laughs> now I can see how you get the ladies. <laughs> Whoa! Hey, <I'm> Whoa! <laughs> Y'all, the little kids saying the N word. Match his face now. <laughs> yeah, seriously, because yeah. that voice doesn't go with that face. You know what I mean? Picture. It's a what full transformation. It's, it's creepy. Twilight Zone. Why is it? Seriously, I can't even take it. Really? Why? What's wrong with him? Come on, you know. Yeah, for real. Those white girls are excited for him. Yo, man. yeah, yeah. I, I, I can see it. Uh, it's funny, but it's also like I feel for them. You know, like just come on, Nick. Fuck these girls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, give them what they need, you know. Any of you girls want to make a cock meat sandwich with your lips as the bun, or what? What do you want to do? Anyone? Look, you ain't gotta sit all over there, all soppy and drippy and shit. I can take turns with all y'all. You know, he's what just if, like, what if two of those white girls just sat on his lap, like one on each leg, oh, yeah. and and the white kid then uses the n word, and the mother goes to get up, and the father goes, oh, "Hold on, bitch, hold on." Hold on. Look at him. He, he got the girls on his lap. Hold on, bitch. Chill. She said, oh, no. I know you didn't call me, bitch. She said, look, I'm putting my fucking foot down. He's got two snow bunnies sitting right on his lap over there. <laughs> you leave this motherfucker alone. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it's funny. Black people, um, y'all have. <laughs> By the racism. way, that sounded like a joke. Like you were starting a joke in the 80s. Black <laughs> people uh, drive like this, whereas white people. They drive like this, you know? Um, can you please put your turning signal on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess you're kind of right. Uh, but, but, uh, no, like, I get it. Black people, y'all got to deal with racism. It stinks, you know? It, it fucking sucks. But you, you don't realize, like, if you get rid of racism, you're losing one thing. And that is to be the token black guy in a predominantly white area, uh, especially an affluent white area. You show up, dude. All these white girls are fucking throwing their, their pussy at you and their tits and they're sucking your fucking dick. My recruiter, he told me that like um, he got with a lot of uh, white girls when he was, uh, you know, like uh, 17, 18 years old before he went in the Marines. And he said he got so much white pussy that he didn't want to fuck anymore. Like he had already tired himself out from fucking bitches. So he would just get his dick sucked like <laughs> that. He like, he had that much white pussy thrown at him. And I was, I, and I clarify, you know, it's like, it's like, Oh, so you're just getting fucked all the time. He's like, well, yeah, by the white girls. Uh, I was like, Oh, the black girls wouldn't do that. He's like, no, nah, I could fuck some black girls, but no, they wouldn't take an ultimatum. You know, like you got to take what they give, but with the white girls, like, They'll take any dick they can get. They'll suck your dick. You you know, take one after another after another. They just want to suck a black dude's dick. Um, so, you know, say they've done it. That's all. And there's a lot of them. So this dude, you know, I, I understand his apathy. You know, like you get called at the N-word by a fucking couple of Jew lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> these kids, these kids, you just automatically assume these kids are Jews. Well, come on. Come on. Let's be real here. It's a fucking etiquette class, you know? <laughs> it's an etiquette so, class in Bel Air. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, like, it's a, it's a, it's a couple of Jew lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> lawyer in training yeah it's a it's a fair trade-off dude you get called the n-word 10 times a day one time for every time you get your your dick sucked by a white chick you know fair if those white girls were acting as negatively as the black kid or the the white guys were he'd be yeah. throwing fists like tyson <laughs> fuck yeah dude yeah he'd be in cuffs <laughs> <laughs> all right all right it's about to get cringe so right, I'll, I'll quiet i'll put okay. it down yep it's like it's not Nick. It's like, Nick's the same person. If I make a joke in front of Nick when he's dressed up as a white guy, and I make a joke to Nick when he's dressed up as a black guy, it's the same. You're thing. gonna laugh either way. As long as you say the N word. Yeah, I don't. I don't feel comfortable doing it. I would have never brought it up never. if you did not say 
You're allowed to say it. You're the one that told us. Yeah. I, I'm not pissed. Because we, 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 told, we were talking about yeah. it, and he said, dude, I do not care at all. Big no, you're the one that told us we could say it. Yeah, it was you. I would never have said it. You know, you know, I went to a barbershop, you know, all black barbershop. Yeah. And I got a different perspective from a black guy. Getting his point of view and my parents' point of view from it. So it's kind of, you know, it got me seeing a different way of why we shouldn't use the word. I know we should use the word anyway, but we use it. But I'm optimistic about Nick's growth because he's he's learning. I think he's understanding society a little bit better. I think we were talking about this in the here. Talking about what? We're talking about. We're talking about I know, but yeah, I don't know. I just I don't, believe me. Does the color of the skin has changed? Yeah, I honestly do. It's cool. Just I do feel weird. Like, yeah, okay. You can know what you want to think. I could want to think that I'm, I'm not racist at all. Yeah. Then there's the point that you start acting different from somebody just based on their color. She's actually being honest right now and saying just because his color changed, yeah. she feels a little bit awkward talking about the same conversation. I, See, think that's why you really, talking? I think that's the dead truth. Well, it's I, happened I, I, to I don't know about it. It has changed. His mind, the color Listen, changed. His, his, mind, mind, his mind is the same. He still thinks the same. He's still yeah, saying what he's doing. We can the same conversation. Which one of you here were saying, what's up, my nigga? Hmm, the black oh, mother has entered the chat. I knew that was coming. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, dude, can we just uh, give props to Rose for for being like just a a shining light in a sea of Jew lawyers and <laughs> apathetic black kids? You know, she, she, I, she's really like she's really trying to keep this thing focused on what it's supposed to be about. And I commend that this black lady. She. The first time a white person said the N word, she had her fucking mind made up about what this whole thing was, you know? Like she's fucking done. She was texting her Jew lawyer saying, How many <laughs> years how many years you get for beating up a kid? Uh, yeah, well, are you well, ma'am, you are black. You're my only black client. So uh, ma'am, uh I, I could give you the rates on whites, Germans, and Jews, but I couldn't tell you anything on blacks. I <laughs> apologize for that. Um I would say that if police are called, there's a high likelihood you'll be shot though. So I I will say this. If you do make Make it to the litigation process. Expect the book to be thrown at you. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So she's going to step up. This is where it gets cringe. Now, again, like you said, uh, it was embarrassing for you when your mother would talk to strangers and be like, you know, hey, by the way, this reminds me of something. Uh, that kid, Tom, who used to be my best friend. Right. Uh -huh. And uh, then he sold my brother drugs and then my brother died. So not really friends with Tom Ended anymore. Friendship. Yeah. We used to play in a Pokemon league, like the card games at hey, this dude card. <laughs> hey, man, you fucking cooler than i thought right nice <laughs> um we used to play in this pokemon league and there were these older kids and they would pick on tom because no one fucking liked tom i was tom's only friend for years in fact he cost me access to the cool kids because he was such a piece of shit and a fucking mm. loser and a no one liked him so piece like they shit. were ripping him they were like uh you know hey blah 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 if you say this i'll beat the shit out of you or something like that and uh i jump in not to rip tom i'm still friends with tom but just a little ball busting i go you should say it tom i would love to see that right and then his uh. father pulls me aside afterwards he goes i heard you saying like you wanted tom to get beat up like what was that about? Aren't you guys friends? And looking no, back no, on that's it. That's in the future, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> sir. I was saying I was hope he'd be killed down the line. Not right yeah. now, obviously. Um, but yeah, that when the parents call you out in front of other people. Oh, it's so embarrassing. It's like stomach turning embarrassing. Oh, all right. I'll let this play out. Which one of you here were saying, what's up, my nigga, and thought that that was funny? Us. We did. So he, I got upset. But I was grateful that they really got quiet when we were actually talking to them. Now, let, me, let me explain to you guys this. That word... Why don't you go back to your own table, Aunt Jemima? <laughs> he starts throwing oh, shit Uncle out. Jemima, yeah. <laughs> Aunt Jemima and Uncle Ben, why don't you head back to your own table? <laughs> <laughs> hey, who who let the peanut gallery in? Get these fucking... <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Right now, it's too powerful. 
for anyone. And you kids definitely don't need to have that word coming out of your mouth because of the fact you don't need your generations and generations. That- By the way, that wasn't me saying that. That was the Jew lawyers saying that. Okay? Yeah. I, just, I want that to be clear. Like yeah. I, I would I would sit there and welcome this discussion. These Jew lawyers are like, well, do you know anything about Israel? Hmm. Yeah, let's lay it all out of the table. What do you know about Torah law? <laughs> coming out of your mouth because of the fact that your generation is a generation that doesn't see color is what the reason you have in this argument now. Right. Now, if you mess around and you slip around someone that is not as nice as Nick, you may catch the beating of your life. So I'm telling you and asking you not to ever say that in the presence. I would never say it. Uh, in, yeah, in our, I know, but I'm saying I would never say it in front of you two. All right. But when it was just you got to understand the environment that it was. It was. Yo, yo. Uh, Oh God. Listen here, blacks. You guys gotta under I like how this guy gets brazen about it. Yeah, I like how he's he's like, hey, my dad put you people in the fucking ground, buddy. <laughs> you know? And I'm gonna represent him one day. You know, like this kid is not taking any shit. My dad will sue you into oblivion, okay? Yeah. I don't know if you know this. My last name, Leibowitz. Jew. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a legit Jew lawyer's son. Uh, Leibowitz, as in Leibowitz, Leibowitz, and Schwartz, hmm, may have heard of them, hmm? Haven't? Oh, well, we put your people underground. <laughs> Financially. Financially, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of obviously. Course, of course. All his, th- all his threats are monetary, yeah, there's, there's no threat of violence from this Jew lawyer, come on. <laughs> of your life so i'm telling you and asking you not to ever say that in the presence i would never say it uh in, in, in our, i know but i'm saying i would never say it in front of you two all right but when it was just you got to understand the environment that it was it was just a bunch of kids it was nick initiating it saying we i would never say it to because generation i would never say you guys because i know that your generation now that, I know I know, that now that you right. have told the black us guy started okay. it. Yeah, you know, the black guy did it. It wasn't us. He said it first. We said it, and he said it. He said we should do it. You know, so you're gonna believe this black guy. You can believe us. You know, you can believe us. We're some black guy. I mean, come on now. I great. like how the dad made that same power move again too by asserting his dominance in front of all the other parents. Like, I'm gonna beat your fucking ass. You say <laughs> yeah. that word around my kid again, you know? Yeah. In front of all these parents, like, who's gonna stop him? He's the black parent. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh, I, I'm not even worried about the black father. I'm worried about that black mother. Oh, well, that's the thing, dude. She black women are silent, but deadly. She doesn't have to say black women are silent. That is the misnomer of all time. It's what you just said there. No, that's the thing is like they're loud when they need to make a point. Black women are. But but when they're truly dangerous is the silent ones. How many? I'll give you that. Yep. I stand corrected. That how many fucking knockout clips? Yeah. They're always quiet before they beat a bitch down. You know, always. That's a fair point. Or how many like tough thugged out motherfuckers just get a glare from a black yep. mother and they yep. go oh shit all right i'm sorry about that yeah okay. that's what it is that's how you know it's real yep. you know that's the real shit not a generation word it's a word that does not need to get oh, i know it carries through all generations you didn't but. know now you didn't know so ignorance played a part but now you're not no i knew before anymore because of you. well i knew before don't interrupt me okay <laughs> <laughs> It's not good etiquette. I understand you didn't take the class, but you know. I know it was set up in a in a hurry and everything. You didn't take the pre course. <laughs> Don't say that word because of the fact that, like I say, it's for your own good. Don't say what word? Which word is it? Is it? Just want you to clarify. Is it nincompoop? Is, so, it, is it Nicaragua? <laughs> Which one is it, huh? He starts poking the black father in the chest <laughs> with a stick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Our final clip today. Don't forget, go to yourworstfriend.com to check out all of our stuff. Patreon.com slash worst friend cast and follow us everywhere at worst friend cast. The title of this clip, and it's the longest one of oh, today. Boy. It's five minutes long. The title of today's final clip is Bruno. The white father drops some fire. Like a rap? Yep. Okay. I can't wait to hear it. Uh, this. <laughs> oh, geez. 
uh, is something that I, I made, actually. Oh, um, were you serious? Months and months ago. <laughs> I wasn't kidding. Oh, he, and he and fuck, you paused at the perfect time. Months ago? <laughs> what the fuck was Bruno doing? That's what he was doing in ATL, huh? That was his business trip. He rented some fucking studio time, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and he went out there and dropped a fucking fire-ass single. I was working on this. Uh, it's called a podcast. Uh, basically, in the future, it's going to be a way for you to get your thinly veiled racism out as jokes. Uh, <laughs> I right. invested this, in this and some made-up money thing. I don't know. Some kind of electrical money. I don't know what it is. Uh, the Black Mother go cut Some me. Jew lawyer told me about it. <laughs> Um, months and months ago, it's called Midlife Rap. Months before this project even came about, I bought a camera and a computer so that I can do my own video projects, and I ended up doing a rap video. After watching rap videos, all the things he could do. For- I think it's a really cool thing that Bruno did here. Why didn't he just make like some sort of manifesto or a video about how red hair is disappearing? Why, like, Jesus Christ. Why man. didn't he just give a bunch of money to the NAACP? Like, what right, are we yeah. doing? What are Talking. we doing here? Bruno, your heart was in the right place, but where have you gone, Bruno? <laughs> where has it led you? <laughs> All right. All right. Ready? Yeah. I can't wait to hear this fire. Long time and getting kind of frustrated, I thought, you know, the middle-aged guy or the middle-aged person should have an opportunity to speak his or her mind as well. And it's sort of a sort of a commentary on the today's rap scene. Nick, you might be particular like this. This is going to be, here's my prediction. This is <laughs> going to be incredibly original, well thought out. He's definitely not going to talk about picking up your pants at all. Um, here's my prediction. Ready? Yeah. I think he's definitely going to say the N word. <laughs> uh, we can only hope. Anxious to show it to the sparks and see how they feel about it. Seems like the perfect opportunity. But ladies and gentlemen, this is called midlife rap. Yo, I don't know if you heard that sand sound, but that was his wife sealing shut. She will never <laughs> get wet again for yeah, this guy. Yeah. That was, yeah, that was the crevice just uh, drying up. You know, it's a valley now. I'd like to do a 10-year follow-up on this. I guess it's what? It's 16 years later. She goes, so uh, a month after the show ended, I left Bruno, and I, I married a uh, a lawyer. He's a, he's a Jew. Um, I married a Jew lawyer. Um, and, uh, yeah, I've never been happier, honestly. Um, we were sexless for years, but then he got me into the cuckold lifestyle, and a black man punched a hole back into my my bare Barbie doll vagina mound. I would recommend to all white women out there in unsatisfied relationships, try and have your cervix stretched in a new way, you know? Um, if your hole has closed up like a due, volcano on Mars, due to your husband's, black man. Due to your husband's media projects. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because your husband's bought a camcorder <laughs> and thought he could uh, revitalize his uh, second half of his life as a fucking TV <laughs> entrepreneur. Yeah. Go ahead and punch a hole back in your pussy like a volcano on Mars. <laughs> Just find yourself a Shaquille O'Neal. Oh. Is this the song? Oh, <laughs> yeah, come dude. on, man. Yeah, this is dude. worse than those fucking things you get at a karaoke booth. Yeah, dude. Come it's, on. It's real bad. I'm going to ask oh. you to refrain from speaking while yeah. the song is playing. got to hear it. I'll mute myself. Come on. Uh. I'm a midlife rapper And I rap from A to Z I'm middle-aged and dapper With a vocabulary No, I don't wear giant golden chains Bag of pants half down my butt I don't disrespect the ladies I don't call them hoes and sluts Sluts, 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 sluts. Hey! 
didn't know what to do. Really, he's doing the head move like a black guy, and he's really slamming rappers. You know, just really ragging on them. I tell tales that are squeaky clean. I stay out of police station. 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 I mean, it was just really obnoxious. It was just like ridiculous. I work hard to feed my children well. Teach them lessons about life. You slap your so-called bitches if not stab them once or twice. You just hear the words. It can come out a little bit harsh and controversial. I don't blame anyone for my plight. I don't blame the man that done me wrong. I don't wave my hands all around. I don't bend my fingers up and down. I don't mumble incoherent. Oh, oh, like I a monkey. wear a big old nasty frown. 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 Yo! 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 Whoa. Sir, what do you think of that? Where to begin? <laughs> oh. So, what do you think of that? Uh, just fuck, dude. Oh man, holy shit, dude! Every, every line, every just... single line was offensive in the in the worst way. You know, as if as if the words weren't offensive enough. He's like miming, stabbing a woman with a knife and contorting his hands like an ape's claw <sighs> wrapped around a tree, like. Holy shit, dude! Is that that is that is the most tone deaf thing I've ever seen. I love it. You know the most disgusting thing in this clip is his look of pure elation on his face. Like, yeah, he's he like, it. <laughs> he's like, these people are gonna fucking love this. Oh my and god! I, I love that we took a journey with him too, because when he sat down, he had this look of like boyhood determinism like oh i hope they like it oh but this this is my big shot like oh oh boy like this like he wanted to grin he wanted to like it there were so many emotions you could tell all bubbling up and now that it's played and everybody's had their reaction and by the way folks who are just listening um there's a part where like when he says the, the thing about the saggy pants where he shows his fucking disgusting black hairy ass crack <laughs> Oh, he's, he's got white skin, but it's black from all that Greek hair or whatever the fuck it is popping out of his asshole. His daughter is eating like a, what looks like tapioca or something, and she looks sick, visibly ill at the sight of her dad's asshole on the screen. And just everything just visually was offensive. You like you can imagine it. It's worse. He's got like all this fucking like outdated 90s styles, all these gold chains and and crosses and shit. And, uh, he, you know, like, uh, he, he's doing the thing about, oh, I, I do Will Smith raps where they're all clean. And, uh, the, the part about like he, he doesn't end up in a courtroom or whatever. They have him sitting in a fucking jail cell, you know? <laughs> oh my God. Just the, and, but no, yeah. To, to cap it off, just the smugness, just like, Hey folks, now that you've seen it, I was a little nervous, but now that I watch it with you, <laughs> what do you think? You know, this fucking asshole. It would have been less offensive if he came on there in blackface before the show took place. Like, full Al Jolson, the color black with red lips or white lip, whatever, <laughs> red lips with the outline. And he just said the N-word 145 times in a row. With no rhythm to it, no beat. If he just came full on jazz singer or whatever it was and just went N word, N word, N word, N word, N word, N word. If he did that, yeah, it would have been less offensive than what he did. At least yeah. the black family could look at it and be like, well, he's going for something. I don't get it. <laughs> exactly. I don't respect it. Yeah. Yeah. The confidence that he has right here, just sitting here, like, you got to see it, right? You blacks have got to understand now that you've heard my rap, right? You're going to get your act together. He's so certain that black people are fixed now because he did this rap. And, and I feel like that doesn't happen for the guy who's just dropping end bombs. That dude is trying to ruffle feathers. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. Uh, yeah, that guy's trying to ruffle feathers. This guy here is, he's expecting the Sparks family, who are the black family. He's expecting them to go, Bruno, we'd like to cash out our savings so you <laughs> can make an entire album. That has changed our outlook on rap. That has changed our outlook on rap culture. 
Nick <laughs> Nick is supposed to stand up the black kid and go like, I don't ever want to listen to rap music again because you taught me, Bruno, that it's not a good culture to follow and that I can respect myself more as a man by pulling up my pants and using proper words and not calling women bitches and sluts. Bruno it, is expecting this black mother to be like, we owe you reparations. We real sorry about everything we ever did to you, Bruno. <laughs> anytime we ever laughed at you for having that little ass dick or anytime, uh, anytime, anytime we got mad at you for saying the N word, we was wrong. We was wrong, Bruno. There's a clip in, uh, what is that movie? King of Comedy with, uh, De Niro and, uh, uh-huh. he plays, he plays like a delusional fucking guy who kidnaps, um, basically like the Johnny Carson. It's okay. a Scorsese movie. It's, it's, I've never seen it. I know, but it's, it's not, oh, sorry, not, I know. What I meant to say is, um, I would assume you never saw it. Not a lot of people did, but there's one scene that's so great. He starts fantasizing about people and all these people from his life are coming up to going, his name's Rupert in the movie. He goes, Rupert, we were wrong. We were wrong and you were right. You were mm. right all along. That's what Bruno's picturing. He's picturing Nick like pulling up his pants, standing up from the couch and pulling up his pants and going, Bruno, you're right, man. In fact, I'm going to sign up for the second class in that etiquette class because I want to be classy like any white man would be. And the father's going, I didn't get a job at work, but it's just because I didn't work hard enough. It's not because I'm black. It's because I didn't work hard enough for it. And I'm going to step up and do that from now on, Bruno. No more excuses. I imagine no matter what people are saying to Bruno, that's the reality he lives in. (laughs) It's in his head. (laughs) Oh, all right. Let's finish this clip out. It was cool. Yeah. What do you mean? It was straight. I mean, yeah. I kind of ragged on the rapper. Does that offend you? No, I mean, I mean he, he did that. He's poking him in the chest. Are you mad? Does that make you mad? Huh? I ragged on rappers. I ragged on your people, huh? How does that make you feel? Make you want to go slap a hoe? Uh, make you want to go start swinging on me? Maybe uh, find out if we're in a stand your ground state? Huh? Make you want to impregnate one of my kinfolk and leave her high and dry? <laughs> Thinking we were gonna get angry and stir up something. It didn't even bother me. I just thought like, how ridiculous you are. I, mean, I look at it like, just like when a comedian talks about, yeah. I mean, I just look at it like that. I don't know if it was meant to get under my skin type things or not, but Come it didn't good. offend me at all. I, I didn't even care about it. That's his creative expression. Let him have it. Wow. I don't like Fleetwood That's, Mac either. So, you know, yeah. these motherfuckers could do whatever they want. Who <laughs> gives a yeah. shit? Are we sure this family's black? Because I was expecting a way different reaction. Oh, you know, they're going to do something. I, I just I wish feel like, there yeah, was a haul on a fight at one point. Just I feel like this is going to get used against Bruno later on because... I'm uh, again, I I side with that white girl in the limo. I'm offended by that video (laughs) and I'm shocked that this black family is like, hey, art is art, you know. I'm more offended by he what could have said the N word. <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't. I would have been cool with it, you know. I'm more offended by what Bruno did than those Jew lawyer kids did. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh fuck, man. Yeah. J- oh my god. Yeah. Br- maybe like Bruno's. Jew lawyer confidence is just <laughs> rubbing off on these black folk, you know, and they're like, you know, they're starting to come around. They're like they you break them with the art, you know, isn't that what the uh, the conspiracy guys are always saying, you know, like they get their their stuff and they get their little fingers into your kids with the art. You know, they make the trans people and the Jews and the blacks. They make it all cool for your kids in TV and music. And then they got them, you know. Now they're communists. Maybe, maybe this Bruno, family. <laughs> Bruno's pulling a fucking government on these families, <laughs> a deep state op. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> maybe the the black family is just a uh, the free speech absolutists. They're like, hey, I think Bruno should be able to say whatever he wants to say. They turned. You know why that fucking <laughs> that little white kid convinced them? He's like, no, yeah. no, no. You don't understand the context of it. Nick said it was all right for us to use it, and the mother's like, shit. You know what? That really brings to light a lot of, lot of thoughts I have on free speech. You know, we was talking to that Jew lawyer, and he was really <laughs> making a lot of sense. So we watched Bruno's thing, and I know he wanted us to be offended or 
disgusted or so cringed out that we vomited on ourselves, but really, I just want Bruno to be able to express himself in the greatest country in the world. We just let it roll off our shoulders. <laughs> all right. I think both me and my mom were really... Let's see. Me at all. I, I didn't even care about it. That's his creative expression. Let him have it. Actually, I think both me and my mom were really skeptical. It feels a little bit like it's making a separation between <laughs> two different cultures that might not exist. What do you mean cultures? Like with a midlife man in white America versus the black rapper, which seemed to be the well, main... By the way, I never mentioned black. Personally, I don't like that rap. And I <laughs> no shit. By, by the way, I never said the word. I was actually know? referring to Eminem. I don't know if you guys know that or not. Uh oh. Yeah, he you guys a all lot of bad stuff. You guys yeah. all assumed I was talking about black people. Who's the fucking racist now? <laughs> he takes his hat off, he drops it, and he goes to bed. <laughs> yeah, that was his plan last night. He thought of that. He's like, "Fuck, I gotta play this goddamn video. I gotta think of something that doesn't go over well." You know, like that was his thing. Like, uh, you know what? You're the racist. <laughs> Oh, God. I didn't watch the end of this. It Maybe that is his point. Maybe he's going to make the difference between culture and rap and, and or culture and and race and, and kind of divide it up and be like, well, I'll just. Oh, I hope not. That would be so much worse. I'll just say this. If that is his plan. I, I, his Jew lawyer thought, <laughs> you know, <laughs> oh, yeah. you're going to go on Ice Cube show. Oh, you better have a backup plan in case they make you look racist. Make them look like the racist. Hmm? Yeah, hmm? that's that's what we've done for 3000 years. Now, oh, you want to nail our Messiah to the cross, huh? Well, he's not the Messiah and you fucked up and now you're persecuting us. Yeah. Now, Bruno. Hey, I got to get back to counting money, okay? So you, <laughs> <laughs> you go play your little TV show. Yeah. <laughs> I told him before, it's really offensive to me. I, I squirm just because. Unlike when she's with Nick and when she squirts. Um, yeah. <laughs> here's what I was going to say. Um, you made fun of her early on, and I had the foreknowledge of where this was going to go, so I don't blame you. But I, 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 we haven't finished the clip yet, but winner this week is Rose. Rose is the only winner this week. Yeah. Right. Oh, the and, entire and white the, and black race lost this week. The black mother, I will still say, is a winner. Uh, you know who else is a winner? Nope. Yeah, I uh, for calling them out. No, nope, but she got, dude, she got fucking cucked by the Jew lawyer, dude. She's letting Bruno make these fucking crazy Fair racist point. ass yep. videos. Yep. All right, she's a loser this week. I'll tell you a winner though is the white mother. Because in the previous three episodes, <laughs> they have made her look like a terrible piece of shit. And uh, Bruno we, really stepped up to become the embarrassing one in the family. Yeah, yeah. Win by default. The only sensible white adult on this <laughs> yeah, show. <laughs> yeah. It's like a race, except at the end, there's a firing squad and she just never ran. It's like, yeah, yeah she didn't win the race, but she also didn't get killed at the end either. So, yeah, you know. Let her keep her life, I guess. <laughs> Never mentioned black. Personally, I don't like that rap. And I've told him before, it's really offensive to me. I, I squirm. Just because I think, especially being in the center of something that is so racially conscious. But see, you can't. You know why? Because we're taught growing up that these kind of things That's an happen. That's artistic expression. He just, can do what he you can know, say. We don't take it yeah. personal. Oh, who's we? Blacks. I'm absolutely fully impressed with your creativity and ingenuity. Um, ah, shit. She just lost. The mother just yeah, lost. I'm impressed fucked. with your creativity and ingenuity. I love the way you showed your Greek asshole hair. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I guess we for, we did forget about her black poetry slam. Oh. Where she was like, uh, oh, this beautiful creature thing. <laughs> she looked at the kid who wasn't out of the closet and she's like, my little fag child. Like, yeah, she, my she... little homo black <laughs> baboon I, baby oh yeah yeah and then she just she's like i gotta defend my man oh he's looking at her like bitch you better stand up for me here or, yeah or i'm gonna <laughs> wallop you <laughs> uh, all right let's let this play your creativity and ingenuity um I was offended by the rap song. Oh, okay, good. There's a tone to it. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. It, um, 
is the same issue I've had with you throughout the project. I don't experience Bruno having compassion in some ways or a depth of understanding in or any willingness way. to... <laughs> Oh God! Go ahead. I like how she's wearing a bandana, like she's in NWA now yeah, too. Where did that start? Yeah. <laughs> Suspiciously started wearing a bandana two weeks ago. Well, she's got straightener in her hair. It's okay. Yeah, it's all right. She just relaxed it. <laughs> oh, hold on! I have to go wash it out. It's burning my scalp. Hold on. <laughs> S sorry, my hair's breaking off. I'll be right back. Feel in a deep way. He's got kind of a meat and potatoes basic opinionated judgmental stand there's a tone to that that is offensive to me it seems to i don't do that and it negates the black right. experience right. and i don't do that right. well no shit you don't do that right. you didn't f grow up black right and i think that the one thing is that knock and mock things we don't understand that's it Right. Yeah, and if you don't, yeah. you, you, don't you irritate it rather it. than respect it and inquire into it. Again, Hard to. I'm not. It's not. No, no, you can say that. I don't accept it. <laughs> it was his alter ego. He was, but again, it's not Bruno. It's, it was. It was MC Cards. M yeah, MC, like. MC Middle Aged Dad. Okay, yeah. he's a different guy. It's like you don't. You know, you guys don't all assume Marshall Mathers and Slim Shady are the same guy, right? Yeah, that's MC Mad, huh? <laughs> MC Mad. Middle-aged dad. Fucking piece of shit, Bruno. You know he did it on purpose. Yes, of course he did. Yes. Okay, I don't think you're writing on behalf of midlifers. I think you wrote from your point of view. Period. And I think that you're couching it by saying you're appealing to an audience. You have these judgments that I think you have no right to have. I honestly can't tell at this point what implications this is going to have for us. Bruno thought paying for his wife's poetry class would just get her some fucking <laughs> poetry books and shit. It taught her all about the black experience, though, you know? Oh, he, yeah, Christ. he's an idiot, dude. I can't believe that. Um, I, you know, I, I learned a little bit about narcissistic personality disorder. Mm -hmm. And it's like uh, one of the characteristics is like you you always think, even when all the circumstances should should tell you like, oh, no, this is not going to go in your favor. Um, you usually think it will, you know, yeah. and that that is Bruno to a fucking T, man. He is a real narcissist straight up. It's crazy. Well, I like him. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> He's a great father. <laughs> All right. Uh, that was Black White uh, Volume 4. Um, we are not sure well, when 5 one. will come out, but I really enjoyed that one, and they only I get did. crazier. Mm -hmm. Go back oh, in the fuck. RSS feed and watch the previous ones. You could check out the link to this YouTube video in the episode description. Um, don't forget, go to yourworstfriend.com. Uh, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at Worst Friend Cast, and sign up for the Patreon. Okay, patreon.com slash worst friend cast. Dollar a month, every episode ever recorded, entirely commercial free, and a bonus episode every week. Uh, winners and losers this week, Pretty we cool. already went through it, but I think the mother's a winner, the white mother's a winner, Rose is a winner, Bruno's a loser. Um, Ice Cube's a loser. It's just, maybe not. Ice Cube really put white people on blast on that one. I mean, yeah, but dude, come on. We, we like they're still not over slavery. They got to ruin us like this on TV 15 years ago. For your worst friend, I'm Matt. I'm canceled. <laughs> Thanks for listening. You know, I don't want to sound like a queer or nothing, but I'm really going to miss you guys when the show's over. <laughs>